Okay, this is Stellarium 101, an introduction to how to um, use the Stellarium planetarium software. And we're recording this for the future for people who couldn't make it here. But we have a room full of some people and we have other people on Zoom. And I want people to um, feel free to ask questions as we go along, because I think I find that helpful. I know some people like to hold the questions till the end, but, um, um, and so, uh, and my name is Eric Myers. I teach physics here at SUNY New Paltz and I'm the treasurer for MHAA. And as I said, we're recording this so someone else can see this later on. So le and let me share my screen. Um, well, first of all, let me say that I'm going, as an outline for my talk, I'm going to use this document in part, at least. It's a little thing I made that folds up and goes in your pocket. And if you fold it right, the backside is what you need to know to get started. And then you open it up and you get more detail. And then when you open it up even further, you get even more detail. And if you open it up all the way, all the messy details are in, in there that you may not need. We'll only get into that in one case. So uh, it's called the Stellarium Veda Mecum, which is little little helper. And so, um, so first things first, let's get Stellarium. I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, I'm on Windows and oh, we already have here, we've gone to Stellarium. Uh, stellarium.org. And as you can see, there's a lot of information here, but the main thing is along the top window, uh, atop of the window, they have links to download um, the software for whatever kind of computer you have. I'm uh, in, the, in, in the auditorium here, I am on a Windows 11 machine. So I'll get Windows 64-bit, Windows 10 plus, and it's going to download it for, um, it'll take a little while here. And, and then this is a, a typical installer for um, an application on Windows. So if we go to the download, actually this I think downloads to the desktop. And so, and I've already installed it here. Um, is that right? Where's the, no, it's not. So if I go to, um, oh, that's the Windows. How do I get to the downloads directory on Windows 11? That's great. Where, where is the file? It's file explorer. Okay, that's dumb. That should be pinned. I'm just learning Windows 11. Oh, it's not there. Okay, wait. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, so actually I've downloaded it twice. So this is Stellarium version 23.3 for Windows 64 bit. Dot exe, it's not the application, it's the installer. So if I launch it, it'll ask what kind of, uh, what language I want. Do I accept the terms? Where should I put it? And the defaults are all just fine. Oh, if you go back, it, it wants to add shortcuts to the desktop and I never liked those, but if you do go ahead and I actually did it for this talk. Um, and you can do it for all users or just the current user. If you turn that off, you won't get them. I like to keep things in the start menu, but I'm gonna do that for the talk and then run it and it will be installed and it'll be available in the start menu. And as you'll see, we also have the links on the desktop. And there are a couple of links actually. Um, Let's go, it's already here, but it's gonna take a while to unpack. <coughs> yes, question, Tim. 
Yes. You can't log, log into the network here on campus? I, I've never had it before. So you never have before. Okay. So to get onto the network here, you have to go to the guest Wi-Fi um, on campus and it will, you'll enter your email address. It will send you a secret password good for a day or something like that in your email. How do you get that if you're not on Wi-Fi? Hmm. Uh, Oh, you uh, you mean like cell, cellular coverage? Is it is the cell phone coverage bad in this room? No, no? you should be able to. Okay, maybe maybe Jack can help you with that. Now, okay, I'm going to start up Stellarium here because it says launch Stellarium after you've done the in install. Um, How but do I'll I install note, it? I'll, I'll note also that. Um, Oh, we have a question, Janet. How do I install it, please? Okay, so you go to Stellarium.org and download for, are you on Windows? I am on Windows, yes. Okay, I got so here go late Stellarium. because the meetup didn't like me. <laughs> Stellarium.org and along the top there, just click on the Windows 64 bit. And then I've just, I've just done that. I'm sorry you joined us late, but I'm yeah. just... Just past that, and we're at the end so of the install. The, I should leave the meeting and go do that? No, you can do it now. I think um, you'll be able to just do that as we go along. Just maybe make, uh, this is a tough thing for remote people, but if you make the Zoom windows smaller and not full screen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, one thing, I think Carl brought this up. You'll notice that there's a Stellarium uh, link to run here. Let, Stellarium by itself, and there's a Stellarium Mesa mode, and that's a special, more generic graphics mode that will work if your graphics card doesn't work. Try the Stellarium link first. You only need the Mesa mode if, if the other one doesn't work. I'm going to launch this, and we'll see Stellarium. And it will take over my screen, I believe. Oh, what did I do? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, oh, oh, wow. There we go. Okay, so I've started, I've installed Stellarium and I've started it on Windows. Now for those who are on a Mac, I'm gonna do the same thing, um, but I'm gonna do it on my Mac. So here I am on the Mac. Let me get this out of the way and I'll bring up a browser. And I, I'm, here I am on Stellarium.org again. Now, instead of um, Windows 64 bit, I'm going to go to Mac OS 11 plus. If you've got an older Mac, you could pick this one. Again, and Windows, if you've got an old Windows 7 machine, it doesn't run great right now, but uh, Windows 32 bit for Windows 7 will work. There is also Stellarium on the web that runs in a browser, and I have not used that very much, but you can, um, and it's very similar. So um, I'm, I'm going to use the desktop version. So I'm going to get the Mac version. And again, it's going to take a little while to download it. And it's a zip file, which means it's just a folder that's packed up. In the past, they've sent it as a DMG file for Mac, which is a disk, disk image um, that, that only works on Macs. This is a zip file that anybody can unpack, but when you unpack it, you get the executable for, for Mac, and so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's get that downloading. And then here it is. So if I double click on the zip file, Mac OS will unpack it. You know, I don't need this anymore. And here it is. And that's the app. You can run it from the desktop or you can drag it to your applications folder. It, you can drag it to the main applications folder on your Mac or you can drag it to the applications folder in your own personal uh, uh, applications folder on your account. Here, I'll launch it. And yes, it's verifying. 
Do we really want to run it the first time? The controls are almost exactly the same between Mac and Windows with one exception. When we get to key bindings, on Windows, you'll hold down the control key and on a Mac, you'll, you'll hold down the option key or the command key, which has the little propeller you are here symbol. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Windows here since it's just, I'm standing in front of it. And here we are. Now, I've already been on this computer before, so it, it, um, it has loaded um, a landscape for here on the SUNY New Paltz campus. If you, if you start it ver the first off, actually, with the newest version of Stellarium, it's going to give you no hor zero horizon. It's just, it's just a blank green at the bottom of the screen to show where the ground is. <clears throat> and um, and this one actually has labels. So uh, to show you around, the first thing to, to know is that, okay, we're looking at the night sky right now at this time, at this location here in SUNY New Paltz. And you can change the view simply with the mouse by dragging. So click anywhere and drag it around uh. and you can see we're just panning around to see. I can pan here and tilt up and down. So you you just very easy to change which way you're looking. I need to get rid of those. La those labels are nice for showing us. We're actually in the in the building behind Wooster Hall. So there we are. Um, let's see. Oh, I can see. Thank you. Let me get rid of the labels and see we're looking south here. So, um, so that's how you can move, move around. And then for any object that you want to inspect more closely, you just click on it. So Saturn is about to dis, uh, disappear behind the JFT tower. I will click on it. <clears throat> You'll see tons of information on the left about it. That's the default and I'll show you how to fix that. I really don't like all that info, but you can see how much there is available. And then we want to look at this object. So to center on an object, you push the space bar. You do that so often that they made it really easy. And now we're in the middle of that. And now we can also zoom in. I'm going to use the scroll wheel on the mouse because I find that the easiest thing to do. So if I just roll the mouse forward, we're zooming in on Saturn. And as you'll see, as we get there, there's Titan, there's Hyperion. These are the moons of Saturn. There you can see the rings. And there we are. Okay. Now, and then I'll use the mouse to zoom out as well. However, I can also use the slash key and the backslash key to zoom in on something. So let me, let me go back to this is what we were looking at earlier. And if I do the slash key, I zoom right in on the object. So that's a quick way to zoom in quickly. And it's kind of quick, but it's not so jerky. And then I can zoom back out to the, to the default view. Is it timed out? What's the problem with the microphone? Breaking up. We need to charge them or? I don't know about Stellarium Web, so that uh, the homework will be to try it, <coughs> try the same keys on Stellarium Web. Okay, now, so uh, an easy way to zoom in on something is with the slash key, and then to zoom out, you use the backslash key, 
and the mnemonic for remembering which one is which is back slash takes you back out to the bigger view, okay? Now, there's one other thing that's not on the list, but I think it ought to be, and that is Stellarium goes, um, defaults to full screen. Sometimes you wanna look at something else, especially if you're in a Zoom call. So <clears throat> it's actually not too hard to go out of full screen mode and go back in with F11. And on your keyboard, it might be just pushing F11, or it might be put holding down the function key, Fn, and pushing F11. It depends on the keyboard. It depends on the operating system, too. On, on my Mac, I have to hold down the function key and then push F11. On this Windows machine, I just push, you can see F11, and now it's gone to a window. It's not full screen. And then if I do F11 again, I'm back to full screen. So that's easy. And it's, that's handy if you need to do something in, in between. OK, so that's all the thing. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to right click away from Saturn so all that information on the side has gone away. <clears throat> so that's how you can move around and see what's in the sky. Let's see. There's the moon. There's Saturn. And I think, yeah, Jupiter's up here. So if I click with the left mouse button on Jupiter, push the space bar, um, slash to zoom in. Oh, there's Jupiter and it's the moons. And then backslash to back out. And I'm back to farther out. Not all the way, I guess, but I can go. Here. And then if I right click somewhere else to get off of it, the information goes away. So that's, that's the easiest way to navigate and find things to look at. The next thing to know is that there are actually some, some menus that are available with the mouse. They're at the bottom and at the bottom, bottom, bottom left and left bottom. So and you can see it along the bottom, actually, it has this little information strip at the bottom it says where you are, you're viewing from Earth, because in fact, Stellarium can view from the moon and Mars and even Uranus. You're, it has the coordinates that you're at. It also shows the field of view, 83.7, almost 90 degrees. That's the how many degrees from the left side to the right side. And you'll notice as I zoom in on Jupiter, the field of view gets smaller and smaller. The FPS here is frames per second, and that tells you how well the animation is working. And if that number goes really low, it means your computer is working really hard and struggling to keep up. And you may want to make no sudden movements, but it's still going to render it, but it may be slow to do that. And then the other thing it's got is the date down here. Um, you'll see that the time, uh, the date and time, and in UTC minus 4.56, that's ugh, some kind of strange uh, time zone that we're in. I, I, I know how to fix that. We'll see it. Also, it should say where we are. So this bottom menu, let me come back to it. You can see when you move the mouse to the bottom, the menu pops up so you can select things here. And then if you move the mouse to the side, you get another menu. And this is where all the configuration men menu is. So things that you can do like, OK, let's go through the top. And you can see when you move the mouse over it, the item, it tells you what it is. So location window, that's, a, that's I think, a compass rose. Um, the location window you can get at by clicking this or pushing the F6 button. So you can do, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts in all this, but I think the mouse is easier for beginners. So you can pick your location, let's do that. And it says, oh, where are we? we well, get the location from the network. And if your computer can figure out where you are from like your ISP with geolocation, it knows where you, you'll see it, it changed us to uh, New Paltz. And it changed the location down here to New Paltz. And it changed our time zone to exactly minus 5, UTC minus 5. So once it knows where we are, it sets, the, sets these things just right. You can go through this list of where you want to be and find a lot of places and type to me. We, let's see. I think we can type in, if I type New York, West New York, Williamsburg, Troy, Syracuse, 
Spring Valley. Does it know? I don't think it knows New Paltz. New Plymouth, Australia, Asia. No. But the Poughkeepsie is here. So instead of New Paltz, we can go over to Poughkeepsie. Okay. So that's the location. You can also, if you really want to be general and see what it looks like for someplace, you can click on the map. I'm not going to do that right now, but it, well, let's just see. If I click on Australia, yeah, here's what it looks like in Australia from the sky. It's daytime there. We have to turn off the atmosphere and uh, I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Let's go back to New Paltz. Reset the location, get location from GPS. It's got to figure out where we are. Uh, it doesn't have a GPS. P O U. -G. We'll go back to Poughkeepsie for now. Okay, that window, you'll notice the location window menu comes up and you can drag it around. It's a semi transparent and then X out of it. You can have multiple menus up at the same time, but that gets confusing. So this is the date and time window. And you can select the view from any date and time. You can go back to the year 6 AD and look for the Christmas star if you like. I've done it. Um, you can go back 100 years and see what the sky is. That's the final exam when, when we get there. So this lets you, what, what we usually use this for is to see what the sky looks like in an, another day. Uh, uh, sometime coming up. So let's see, we have a star party coming up on December 8th. You can, you can toggle or you can type. So at 19, you set the hour. You can move this out of the way. Change the time, drag the view. Oh, look, there's Jupiter and Saturn and no moon on December 8th, so that's nice. And you can, okay, this, this is date and time. This is Julian day, if you are so inclined to use that. I think most of us would not, but you can enter times in Julian days the way astronomers often do. Pardon? Oh, those are radiant, those are not comets. Those are radiants for, ast uh, right, the Northern Tarides, meteor showers. <clears throat> And you can turn those on and off, but uh, that's, what th that's what that is. Okay, uh, next menu, sky and viewing options. And you can see there's a lot of things you can do. You can change the Milky Way brightness. You can change the brightness of stars. You can have spiky stars. Raj likes spiky stars in the planetarium and I don't. So you can limit the magnitude if, uh, to, to something Turn on the light pollution index to try to match what location you're at. Turn on the zodiacal light. You can change projections and maximum field of view. I'm, go and explore this. Solar system objects, you can set defaults. Deep sky objects, markings, you can change the colors of all the markings. Sky cultures, there are several here for, the, for different uh, um, in interpretations of of uh, uh, constellations. Yeah, this is a lot. It's, it's an open source free project that a lot of people have contributed to. I've done my part for landscapes. Now here, landscapes let you change the picture that's along the horizon. So you can get the feel about what it looks like to be in an alpine meadow or in a desert or out at sea. This comes with all these different uh, defaults. Garshing is the view from the ESO headquarters in Garshing near Munich, Germany. And here we are, where, where's the building? Oh, this is what it looks like now. There's, there's the building. This is the sky view um, in Garshing. But the time is actually, what? <laughs> we're in Poughkeepsie time, but we're looking at a sky for Garshing. The one that I've, landscape that I've added. So to go back to landscapes, landscape, and here's Old Main Quad. And you can add these and you can create them. So we're back, we're back in, in New Paltz now. 
you'll no notice that uh, it says Earth Poughkeepsie, even though I'm in New Paltz. If I go to landscapes and check, okay, use this landscape as default. We do here. Position from landscape. The landscape also has the latitude longitude in it. And if you use that, it'll select where you, um, where you are, not just what the picture looks like. You have to go off it and come back on it. So if I go back to Garshing, now look at the time. This is Garshing and the time is now UTC plus one. It's, it's 1.30 in the morning in Germany. So you can see what the sky looks like now over there now in their time zone. So that's very useful. I'm gonna go back to um, Old Main Quad, SUNY New Paltz. X out of that. And you'll see Earth location, Old Main Quad. And we're back to our time zone. So that, that's really useful for looking at the sky from a particular place and seeing. You, you can actually uh, look at the, where the tree line is from some of these to see whether uh, or not you'll be able to view something. Question, Jack? Uh, oh, it didn't change it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we got to, thank you. So we got to go back to uh, location, I think, and check, use, uh, uncheck, yeah. use custom time zone. Yeah. Uh, enable daylight savings yet, because we do auto enable atmosphere. It changed it back. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we had to, there's a couple things we had to change there, but now we're back, so we can bop around. Okay, the search window is really useful for finding things that you don't know where to look. So it just pops up a search window and give me something you want to look for, guys. What? Pleiades. Okay. And you can see it, it's filling it in. And... I'll hit return or go search and it, there it is right there, all this information. And if I zoom in on the Pleiades, there they are. Okay, and now we wanna go look for something else. I'll pull up search again and maybe go look for M31. Since we were just talking about that, there's Andromeda. Oh, a student was talking about it with today. So that's... Um, so that's gonna get used a lot. You can either use the search window from the menu or push, press F3. This, uh, the tool, the, the wrench is for, for configuration settings. And again, there's lots of things here. The main things let you save your settings, save the view. You can set a default view. I wanna look at this place with this landscape and in this direction with this field of view and you push save, save view and it'll remember that. You push save settings and all the things that you, all the little minor configuration things will be set for the next time. So um, the information, these are all the things that you can see and they're all turned on by default when you install. And uh, it's nice to see that, but uh, I will go to short and then I'm going to take some, I don't need right ascension and declination, but I do like to know the um, absolute magnitude. I like to know the distance, catalog number and name, and that's enough. It's customized and you'll see when we pick something, um, that's what will show up. And, and if, oh, if I go back to main and say save settings, it'll always remember that. You have to remember to do that. Extras are additional buttons that you put on the bottom. I'll have to show you that. There are extra star catalogs. By default, you have a few star catalogs already installed, but if you click on this, you'll have even more so you can see even fainter, deeper stars. And that's a mixed blessing because you may not wanna see them and it can make your computer run slower having to do all that. Right, and so it, it actually may not be a good, I, I clicked on this at one point and I think I need to undo that. The time lets you uh, uh, arrange for the, the equation of time, whether you wanna use the system date and time or uh, and the display format. 
and the time correction, the algorithm for the, the equation of time. There are several here that you can pick. And well, let's not get into that. Tools, planetarium options for disk viewpoint gravity labels. Scripts, there, it's actually, there are scripts that can be run to do special things. And the thing you might like plugins that will have different calendars. You can get historical supernovae, uh, navigation stars if you're into that and you can load at startup. <clears throat> Oculars can show you what it looks like through a telescope. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Quasars and pulsars, satellites in the solar system ed editor and telescope control if you have a telescope that's a go-to telescope, um, it can send signals through a serial port to control that. I have not played with that. This is Stellarium 101. That would be like Stellarium 301 maybe. So that's, a, that's, an, upper, that's an upper division course that I haven't played with. But uh, oh, exoplanets, let's yeah, load that at startup and then you can configure. So, so this is where you add all the extra, extra thingies that you might like to add. Um, in here. So let me X out of that. And then uh, let's see, astronomical calculations window. I'm going to skip over that. That's highly technical. And the, the thing you may want, F1 is, it's down here, but it's the help window. And it's a list of all the key bindings. It's got more than is on this little sheet of paper, but they're all in order. You can go down, they're grouped by groupings. I basically taken this and reordered it to print it on this little one page. The about button shows you, uh, the main thing here is the version number and the version numbers have changed. The current new version is 23.3 and I believe the 23 is the year and it's the third release or actually I think that's the March release. They started for the longest time Stellarium was 0.9 something me with the idea that 1.0 is finished. And they finally did 1.0 last year, and then they did 1.1, and then they jumped to 23.1 because they decided to use this other version. And we can check for updates. We have the latest version. There's a log file, configure Oh, there is a configuration file. Again, you can go in and see that this is more technical than we need. Okay, so that's the side menu for configuration to set the time, to set the landscapes. You'll use that from time to time. The bottom menu has all these different buttons and you can select which ones, but the one I wanna focus on here is the time controls. And you can see there's a little play button that is highlighted because time is now going forward at the normal rate. And that is the time, it is now 1943, so I better speed it up. Um, but if you wanna go faster, you can use the double arrow and see the sky moving and see the numbers. I'd like to see the clock ticking and even faster, 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 faster. And then if I go back to the play button, it'll just stop and go back to normal. Now we're taking one second every second. If you hit play again, we will pause. So the clock is not ticking. So if you wanna take a certain time and view it and then pause on it, you can do that. And then hit play again. You can also go back in time with the back arrow. And now you can see we're going backwards in time if, I, if I'm going backwards in time and I push the forward arrow, it'll slow me down. I'm still going backwards in time. If I do it again, oh, I'm back to one second per second counting down. If I do it again, I'm paused. If I do it again, I'm going forward in time. So these forward arrow, back arrow can either speed you up or slow you down. They can also reverse direction. So if you slow down enough that you stop and keep going, you will back up and you put it in reverse. So you can use this to see sp speed up time in the forward or backwards direction. You can also very easily, oh, look, there's a satellite. Do, 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 look at that. Oh, which one is it? If you click on it, it'll tell you. Oh, and if I push space bar, we'll track it. It's NORAD 46826. And we can see it going through. 
Okay, that's cool. Now, if I go back down to the time, if I push play, we're now going at regular time, one second per second, and you won't see it move as much. But notice we're, we're already at about nine o'clock at night because we were moving forward. If you hit this button, you will go to the current time. Bing. Be careful because I will, okay, let me get off that guy. Um, I'll, I'll speed up, I'll find something I'm interested in and I'll go to stop down to look regular time and I'll hit the wrong button. And I'll go, I'll still be speeding, but I'll just keep, it's like Groundhog Day. I keep going back to the current time and then I'll remember which buttons. Those two things are too close together, but oh well. While I'm here on the bottom menu, I think one, one of the most important things to know at this point, because this is a lot, you can do a lot with Stellarium this way, uh, the power button, okay? This is how you get out of Stellarium, not just F11 to get out of the window, but you can stop Stellarium and you're done. And then I remember I saved the settings. So if I start it up again, it'll start up and it, hopefully it'll go back to where we were before. Pardon? Okay, good. Yeah, so I'm back to my viewpoint here and my field of view and hopefully my information. Oh, where did you go, Saturn? It's behind the, the, the building now. So, so the other things that are on this menu here will control the, the view, but, and then and, and they do make it easy. So for example, here, this, this one here is full screen mode. If you forget F11, you can see the icon will remind you, oh yeah, go out of full screen, go into full screen, F11. And there are other functions along the bottom that are useful, but I'm gonna switch to the keyboard because the other thing that's nice about Stellarium is if you don't wanna use the mouse all the time, or if you want instead of one button or two buttons on your mouse, you've got all the buttons on the keyboard, you can really control things easily. And so I wanna show you some of the things we can do with, with the keyboard. And since I wanna find Saturn, and I think it's behind that building, I'm gonna push G to make the ground go away. And a lot of the keys are chosen for their mnemonic uh, purpose. So G stands for ground and push it again and it goes on. It's a toggle and there's Saturn. And if I click on it, oh look, the information is just the short version that I saved last time. So that's good. I'll turn the G ground back on, turn it off. Um, something else to notice, okay, the ground is here. By default, Stellarium also takes into account the atmosphere. And so you'll see that, that glow around the moon and, and some things are, hey, you can't see all the stars. Let's, I will push A for atmosphere to turn off the atmosphere. Well, there's still some glow on the moon, but, um, but look at all the stars that pop out when the atmosphere is not getting in the way. I'll turn it back on. You can also play with the atmosphere with turning on fog. So here's, let's see, fog. I'm not seeing, a, I'm not seeing the fog doing too much here. Oh. It can know the light pollution. You can configure it or the person who makes the landscape that you're using can put in what they know for, for the light pollution. Right. If, if you're using a landscape, can you, can, does it know about the light pollution in that local area? Um, if the person, if you're using a landscape that has the coordinates in it and the person set that created it put in the light pollution on it, yes. Otherwise, you'll have to do it by hand. Can you a lot go of folks see the aurora borealis? Um, I don't think it shows auroras. No, it doesn't show auroras in, in Stellarium. Good question. Okay, so 
um, I'll turn the atmosphere off. It's much crisper. And we've got the ground, we've got the fog. I can also, um, well, let's see. I want to toggle, there is a toggle. Toggle, who, who's that? Who can I find? Well, let me, didn't I see Orion around here somewhere to the south? In the east, okay. Oh, that's right, it's nighttime, right? There we are, okay. So there's the, the Orion Nebula. Um, you can actually, I, I can toggle on the uh, images of deep sky objects and that if your computer is having trouble with things you can navigate around without it. Here, I'm just turning off the images and you can see what's there. That's not a big thing. Um, now, you, I, I said to zoom in and out, there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm using this, I'm using the mouse, um, I'm using the, the mouse scroll wheel here, but I can go backslash to go back to the previous view. I can also, on Windows, I can use page up and page down, if I can find them, yeah. So page up zooms in, and page down zooms out, as you might expect. On a Mac, you have to hold down the command key, the little propeller key, and page up and page down. If your keyboard has page up and page down, my laptop does not. But that gives you another key that you can use to zoom in. You can also, here, let me put the ground in just to show some other keys that, that make sense. If you want to look north, you type N. Oh, I'm sorry, capital N. Uppercase and lowercase are different. So I hold down Shift N and I'm looking north. If I want to go south, I hold down Shift N to go south. Shift, shift as in capital N. Oh, S for South. Yeah, did I say N? I'm sorry. Shift, okay, Shift E, capital E to go East, West, and capital Z as in Z. Any guess what Z would be? The zenith, looking straight up. Okay. Some other things that are on the list here to, to zoom in and out. You can take a screenshot of what you're seeing. Let's say, okay, let me go back to looking to the, uh, to the east, say. I'll put the ground in. Uh, I wanna, oh, I wanna pan down. Oh, you can use the arrow keys too. Left, right, up, down, oh, put the, there's the ground. And oh, look, Orion is behind those trees. What will it look like when it comes up? Let's go forward in time. And there, Beetlejuice is up. And I want to, I'll, I'll scroll around here. And I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna bring up, you can see the time always along here, but I can also bring up the time and date window just to do that. And now, I'll take a screenshot to send to my friends or post to my, for my star party to say, hey, look, at 21, just a little bit before 10 o'clock tonight, Beetlejuice will come up behind the trees. It's on Windows, it's Control S, S for screenshot. So Control S. You can, and it doesn't really tell you that it's done it, but it saves it either in the downloads, you can set the next photo, it puts it in. I always like to change it to the desktop because then I see it and can throw it away or use it or however. It's a Stellarium shortcut control, uh, control S on Windows and Command S on a Mac. In general, if it's control something on Windows, it's command something on the Mac, even though the Mac has a control key, and even though command things actually do other things on a Mac, like command H hides an application, but com command H in Stellarium is supposed to take you home, as does control H, 
which resets everything, including your landscape. It takes you back to the default view and your default um, landscape. And it's, it's like you got out of Stellarium and got back in. Okay, so you can, um, so use that at your, at your peril. You don't wanna just reset the view with Command H or Control H. Okay, there are also some keyboard commands that give you more fine control over timing. That's on the, the Veda Mecum here. You can increase the rate. So JK and L are all three in a line on the keyboard. And if you do J, you'll see I'm doing this now. You can't see it, but time is now going fast forward. J is like clicking on the double arrow fast forward key. K is hard stop, is stop. L is backwards. And it's little L. Capital L does something else. So we're going back in time. Oh, hard stop. What? Oh, it's forward, isn't it? Have I got? Oh, decreased. Yeah, no, and that makes sense because on the, the okay, I got these backwards on my notes. Um, but it makes sense. J, K, L are in order that the, the J is pointing to the left. So the same way the arrow is, that's like go backward or slow down. And K is stop and L is go forward or speed up. Um, and K twice quickly will take you back to current time. It's supposed to, it didn't. Great. Okay, so that's one flag that doesn't work the way I think has claimed, oh, where is that? It's not on that list, okay. Maybe, I, maybe they've taken that out. Okay, now we can also go forward or backwards by a day. So you'll notice, keep, keep track of the time here. There's Sirius, there's, um, where did you go? There's Orion. Um, if you want to go forward a day, a solar day, then the equal sign. And you know, the way to remember the equal sign is that it's the plus key, only you don't hold down shift. So see how, look at the date, we're stepping forward by one day. And minus sign takes you back a day. You want to go for, forward a week, it's the square bracket keys. Forward a week, another week, another week, back a week, back a week, back a week. If you want to go back one hour, it's control plus. And if you want to go back backwards, it's control minus. And on a Mac, it's command minus and command plus. So, so the keyboard gives you more fine control of jumping around in time than just speeding up and slowing down. You can also speed up, get there and slow down. It's like driving a car and we're home and then you slow down and park. So. That's probably useful to see where the moon is going to be. Yes. Shall we find where the moon is? Moon. Oh, it's down underground here at this time. Uh, on the 20th? Oh, let's go next week. On the 27th, up above Orion. Okay, so this is all the time control and the view control. I'm gonna open up, I'm gonna take the, the little answer card and open it up to the inside. And I'm not gonna go over everything because we're running out of time, but I've given everybody a lot uh, to, to get around to see things. But I've, I've been saying this is Orion, and I know that, and some of the folks here know that, but how do people who don't know their way around the, the sky know that? I want to turn on the constellation markings, and the key for that is C. And there they are. So there's Orion. And um, you can also turn on the names with V, I'm not sure it's like a down arrow or something like a an arrow labeling them. And then uh, you can turn on the artwork 
the mnemonic is art begins with R. R, R me, me mateys, it's like pirate talk, but if you push R for art, art, you get to see all the artwork. And, and this can change with different sky cultures, but this is what we get and it's, it's uh, free to use. So, and, it, and these are toggles, so turn them off. Constellations, the labels. Now, if I click on one star in a constellation, like Betelgeuse, and then push C, oh, hmm. No, there's a, there's a W to wipe, I think. Let's see if I can do this and have it forget. Uh, there, there may have to configure. Did they change that? Tools. Yeah. Okay, there's a setting somewhere for sky and viewing for constellations. I'm not gonna take, oh, markings maybe, no. There is a way, I, I, mine is set up for to do this, where it would only show you the constellation of, of the star that you've, you've uh, clicked on. And then you do another one, it'll show you the next one and another one and do the next one. And then W will wipe out the list of constellations. But th that's, that's, I haven't got that working here, so let's uh, move on. Um, constellations have boundaries. So B for the boundaries of constellations. You can also, oh, select all constellations is Alt W. Let's try that. Okay, boundaries, turn off the constellations. No, capital W takes you west. Alt, yeah, Alt W, but okay. Here we are back to Orion. Okay, this part, I, I'm not sure why this isn't working, but you can, it, it is possible to do that. And there are also, let's see, let's go north. Shift N to go look north and there, there's, uh, the Dipper, that's the constellation or some major, but I can also turn on asterism lines with Alt, uh, Alt A. And here's an Alt V. There's the mini Dipper. Here's the big Dipper. If I take off C, so C is for constellations, whereas Alt A is for asterisms, which are mini constellations here, turn the ground off. And so these are just, there's the summer triangle, the Northern cross, uh, the, the little dipper. Cassiopeia is also an asterism, what, who knew? Um, and the great square of Pegasus. What? Oh yeah, oh, it's written there as the W, right? Let me turn off those labels. Oh, it's just labeled as the W. It is the asterism W, it is the constellation Cassiopeia. I, I, it's fun to just, okay, so we'll turn that off. So alt, okay, other things you can do. You can actually turn off the stars with S and we're, not very useful, but you can put on star labels with Alt S. And I think they're actually on by default, but if you don't wanna see them, you can make them go away. And then planet labels, the planets are visible. P for planets, oh, they're gone. Bring them back, Alt P to turn off the labels. Let's turn off, I mean, we can get a very nice night sky with no labels at all, or you can turn them on. Um, you can turn on the, uh, Milky Way, deep sky objects, D, and it's actually D or N. I'm not sure, originally it was N and then they changed it to D. This is a list of all these different deep sky objects that you can look at. What's that? The swimming alley. The swimming alley. Oh, I, I, I want to see that. Is that it? Did I get it? 
<laughs> okay. And then let's zoom in on it. Oh, oh there it is. The swimming, the swimming alligator cluster. Yeah, I see it. Okay. And then we'll come back out. So D, a lot of these are just toggles. Oh, Milky Way is a uh, little M. Yeah, it's gone. And you can also turn on, uh, well, meteor showers are a, a more advanced feature, but you, as you can imagine, you can turn them on and off. Um, there are some coordinate systems and markers you can turn on. You'll notice that we've got, you know, put on the ground, the cardinal points for Northwest, West, Southwest, that's Q to turn those on and off. We can get an azimuthal grid with Z. And I think the mnemonic for that is that it's centered on the zenith, right? Or we can have the equatorial uh, coordinates and you can even have them both at the same time. So if you wanna make it really, oh man, that looks like time bandits. Okay, so we're toggling these all on and off. And then uh, let's see, compass markers also can be, let me go back down. Okay, cardinal points just give you the directions there, but shift of Q, capital Q, gives me a little bearings there along the horizon. Oh yeah, and H, H will give you the horizon. We can't see it when there's ground there, but if I, here, let me get rid of the ground with G and, oh, turn off that grid. I'll put in the horizon line, okay? So there's a page here on field of view, so you can zoom in and out, but I'm gonna leave that. Um, turning on the equator, meridian line. Oh, um, the, oh, the ecliptic is, is a good thing to know, right? So let's, there's the ecliptic. I'll put the ground back in. And uh, if you want to see the orbits of things, O for orbits. So there, now let's see, I have to find one. Oh. The markings? What are those? Yeah, that's Capella. Where do well, we, I knew Saturn's down here, right? Oh no, our, what's our time? We're not today. Here we are, here's today. There's the, well, there's the moon. There's Jupiter. If I click on it and push O, you can see I've got, I can toggle its orbit. I think it might be. Oh, I hit a satellite. That happens. It, this won't show its orbit, but I missed, but we're following it along. Which one is, oh, Xiaoxing 2. Shaoxiang 2. Okay, I want Saturn. There's the orbit. If you click away from these guys, let me back up a little and do orbit. It should show them all. What? Huh. Well, mine's set up to show all the orbits. So there, there may be some, some, uh, tweaks to put in on all this too. Uh, no, and the, the ecliptic of date, I'm not sure what that is. The equator, okay, period shows the equator, comma shows the ecliptic, and semicolon shows the meridian line. Ah, well. Next question is, how do you turn that off? <laughs> With a comma. No, no, I mean the notation. Oh, the notation, I don't know. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you is landscapes. Um, you can get different ones. Here, let's go back to, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do control H. Boom. We're back to where we start our default view and everything. And this defaults to um, 
the uh, view here out on the old main quad, and we can select, I showed you how to select, oh no, that's the wrong one. No, that's right, landscapes. And you can see we have these choices, but you can also go and download different landscapes. There's a whole host of them. And uh, on, on stellarium.org, people make them and put them and share them. And I've, I've done several, and I've done a new one that I want to show off today. So um, I've already downloaded it. I will go to Sky and Viewing Options Landscape and see this at uh, Add Remove Landscapes. So a landscape is a packed up as a zip file. It's a directory with several files in it that have the images and the, a, a data file that tells you the coordinates and what direction. Um, it's all packed up in a zip file. You just have to go download the zip file and then tell it where to get it. So add remove landscapes and it'll say, oh, should I go install a new landscape from a zip archive? Yes, click on that. And it'll say, oh, where is it? I think it's on my desktop. Oh yes, Vassar Observatory. Cause we visited there the, uh, in spring, I think, right, Jack? I took some photos, I worked on it a little bit and it's been loaded and get out of that. And here we are at Vassar's Observatory with the twin, with, with the twin uh, domes. And this is what it looks like right now. But if I go forward a couple of hours, Wait. Oh, it, why did it do that? That look, yeah, that's location. Don't use custom time zone. Uh, there now it's now it's UTC five. I brought up this and it it realized it's not supposed to do that. So. Okay, let's let's go back in time a few hours. Oh, I've got the atmosphere off. Oh, I've got the atmosphere on? What's what? why is that there? What's that why what? That, that that sudden brightness that definitely went away. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying car passed by something. <laughs> Maybe. That's weird. You what? Said shadows in the What I I want to go back. Oh, right. Yeah. Go back an hour. There. There we are. There's daytime at Vassar, and you can see it's it's, it's this nice little uh, um, semicircle here with some posts they can put. And there's nothing on the ground, so it's just um, grayed out, but we don't need that. And, uh, and it's actually kind of neat. If you stand right in the middle of this and, and clap your hands, the echo will come right back to you into your ears and it sounds very loud. So this, this is new. I've made this a while ago, uh, last month, I think, and I'm gonna put it out for public consumption, but I have never done it before. Okay, so this is enough to get started. And I don't know if anybody's running Stellarium, they can try this. Here's, here's the, uh, the uh, final exam okay, that I thought of. We want to go to a different date and we want to go to a different time. We want to go uh, see what's in the sky there. So I'm going to, and, and we're going to change the landscape. So there's this controversy that came out when the Titanic movie was released. I, who is that? James Cameron made the movie. Neil deGrasse Tyson saw the movie and I don't know what he thought about the movie, but he didn't like the sky. It was not authentic for that time and place. And he criticized it. James Cameron went back and changed, edited the movie and fixed the sky at some point. But, but in the, early, the original theatrical release, it was the wrong sky. So what's in the sky when the Titanic went down? Let's go find out. So what should we do first? The time, the position, or the landscape? How about the landscape? Okay, so we'll go to sky and viewing options, go to landscapes, and there is um, an ocean 
ocean landscape. Click on that. And now we just have a horizon of water. Okay, then let's go do the time. And the Titanic sunk in, 19, in 1912. And it was April. And it was what day of, the, of April? April 15th. Now the time was hard to find because they, they, they recorded everything with ship's time, which changed with latitude. No, I'm sorry, changed with longitude. And, but I was able to find out from them uh, what the, the GMT time when, the, when the, they first struck the iceberg was um, 2.30 in the morning. So there we are. Oh, and we got some good fog here. Okay, now the coordinates. We need to go to, to location window and oh, it's got us out in the South Pacific. So I can change this a little bit, but I'm actually going to change. I can edit this north 41 degrees. By the way, we're at 42 degrees north, so we're about the same uh, latitude, 41-43. We are farther north than the Titanic when she sunk, 43-32. Okay, that's the latitude. And west, 49. Nine. Fifty six. Forty nine. Elevation one meter. Well, how tall is how high is the deck of the Titanic? Oh. Yeah. Ten meters, 30 feet. OK, we'll give I mean, it's not going to matter that much. Um, enable daylight saving time. No. Use a custom time zone. No, we'll just keep it UTC, which is. Oh, I changed that. Oh, it went back. It changed. Yeah. Oh, thank you. North. 41. 43. It rejected it. 59. No, 32. Okay. There we are. See that spot? That's where she went down. And the time is 0234 UTC. Oh, UTC minus four. No, we want, I want UTC. So How am I not? Oh, it's giving me, uh, it still thinks that I'm in Eastern time. Hmm, how can we change the time zone? So, yeah, I think we're gonna have to subtract four hours to, okay, so three, four, this is now, we're playing a little with the time. I, there's, there's a way to change that time zone, but okay, this is what the sky looked like when Titanic struck the iceberg. Recognize anything? Here, let's look north. You see Vega, there's the dipper. Okay, there's Polaris. Okay, that's north. There's Capella. There's Vega. Okay. And we can, oh, that's a satellite. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, so looking around, oh, is that Betelgeuse? No, that's Jupiter. Just down on the horizon 
there's Jupiter. So Jupiter was just sneaking up. I can turn the fog off, but I think there probably might've been fog. Well, I don't know. It was cold enough for icebergs. Was there fog? Sure. Middle of the night, there was fog. So Jupiter was to the south. Anybody else? I can turn on the planet uh, labels. There's Mars, again, low. Yeah, we're, we're doing our final exam and I think we're pretty much Jupiter and Mars. We're on the horizon in opposite directions. No moon. Where was the moon? Let's find the moon. Search for moon. You can, it remembers your last step. Yeah, the moon is way down there. So it was a new moon. Probably made it harder to see icebergs. Okay, so that's an introduction. There's more in the cheat sheet. There's more in the, in the uh, documentation, but this is enough for you to get around and find things. And oh, the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray timed out. This is still going out to, okay. So again, just to remind you, the way to get out of Stellarium is to go down to no? What's that? Oh, you want to see Uranus? Oh, I don't, I don't want to see Uranus. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't pass that up. Okay, so I will, I will go to now, right? That's the button here for now. We're at the ocean. There's uh, the dipper. Let's go down to... Saturn and the moon and Jupiter's up here and Uranus is close to there. Am I at it? Okay. So we'll go back. Let's use my time controls to go back a day. A solar day is, is um, minus sign. And around midnight you say so i'll do control plus to go forward an hour or uh there that's just after midnight yeah. it's titania is the one um i saw it titania is out here oh stop Oh, <laughs> yes, thank you. You learned well. Okay. Oh, let me turn the atmosphere off just to make it. And the, well, that was 19 minutes ago, right? So now let's run the time backwards. Oh, oh yes. Okay, hold on. Control H. Boom. Oh, there. I'm back in New Paltz, and it's now. So you want to go back a day, right? So. Oh yeah. Let's. Okay. K. So here I am now. And I will go back a day with the minus sign. I will go forward with control plus a couple of hours. There it's 20 minutes past. I'll go up to Jupiter, Uranus. No, that's not it. But it'll get me close. There's Uranus. Okay, and here's some stars. I will go backwards in time. 
I did, I think. Did I? Oh. Yeah, okay. I'm centered on Uranus, so this is the sky moving while. Oh, yeah. So I'm not seeing it. But, but here you can. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's the trees. Yeah, the ground. I'll turn the ground off. That's three, four in the morning here. Uh, let's, is it, uh, sky limiting magnitude 6.5 twinkle. No, it, the star. Okay. If I do that, that right. So I may not have that star loaded in the, Of course. Okay. So that star may not be loaded because I, you'll notice that when I uh, went to the main configuration menu, is that it? Information, extra, extras, catalog five of, now here, let's get catalog six, catalog five, six. They're pretty quick to load. Like I said, you may not want to do this if it bogs down your computer, and I don't know how to offload these. No, unless you set, you might have to set the limiting magnitude and have it. Okay, well, this is the kind of fun thing that you can do with Galarium now if you get in catalog eight. Can you do fun things like fly out to the moon to go around back and see what it looks like back there? Yeah, yeah. You can do all you sorts do of things. And, and like I said, it's inter it was interesting to see what might be mistaken for the Christmas star. Okay, this is 3.50 in the morning. There's the Uranus system. I'm going back in time. Titania. Yeah, but I didn't see any stars coming through the field. Okay. TYC. One, two, three, six. Okay. Okay. It says query Simbad, which is an online database. Okay. TIC or TYC? Oh, here I T T Y C one two three six eight four one dash one. Okay, let me copy that. Search for it. Oh, yeah, we we had it. There. Oh, there's Titania. Seven minutes after. Because it's not very bright. Okay. I'm going back in time. That's as close as it gets. Does it matter where you're looking from the surface of the earth? We're in the path? Okay. Well, this is... 
Okay. It's possible. Okay. It's also possible. Notice if I go to the settings, I think configuration main, we can, the default ephemeris is VSOP 87. And you can get the DE 440 high accuracy. And so maybe, I mean, this is great for, for casual observing and thing, but for something like that, you might need to have Right, so you can, it can be more exact, but again, that's more taxing on your computer. So, although this one seems to be handling it pretty well. Okay, I, that's enough to, to learn and, and go forth and learn more. So the way to get out again from Stellarium is to go down here to the power off button and exit and go forth and explore. That's it. How do you get reference materials for learning how to use it? Um, Other than the piece of paper. <laughs> so there is a manual that comes with the download that has chapters on all these topics that has a lot um, more detail. Um, it's like 80 pages. Okay, so, thank you. So you can dig into that. Thank you. Um, and. I've seen at least one YouTube video of somebody else showing you how to use Scalarium. Mm -hmm. So and just mess around. But the but the manual, I think, will answer a lot of your, your questions if you're digging into more technical stuff. Okay. Yeah, and play. Yeah. All right. Outstanding. Okay. I'll let you. Yep. Thank you so right. much. That will conclude us till next month. Now, next month, we don't have a normal presentation. We have a member's presentation and uh, bring cookies and little cute munchies. We generally don't go out to the dinner afterwards. Um, so uh, if you're going to be in-house, uh, have some cookies, uh, little things. And uh, we will see everyone next month. Um, those who would like to go to Pasquale's right at the street, don't know where it is, let me know. Let's go. I'm ready. Thank you all. Take care. Thank Good you. evening.